what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel if you're new here please hit that subscribe button in today's video we're gonna make one of these clevises right here Now, my setup, a little tiny uh, mini lathe and mill from Harbor Freight. These clevises are what I use on my GT350 splitters as well as our compressible splitter rod kits. I'm getting a little bit low on my inventory and I got a little project coming up where I need a handful of them. So I figured it might be a fun little video, a little learning experience. Machining stuff for me is new-ish. Uh, I'm pretty confident I can make something like this. But since I'll be using them for like mock-up stuff, you know, making some and not dipping into my inventory will be nice. As well as, like I just mentioned, a little bit of practice machining. All right, so first order of business will be to cut all of my pieces to length. I'm going to cut them about 50 thousandths long so I can face them to correct dimension. Um, I'm going to just kind of like mark them with a little scribe, cut them off here. Unfortunately, the center bore on the mini lathe is too small. Um... Otherwise, you could just run it through the center bore and just kind of like part them off exactly. All right, so one done. I'm um, pretty much just gonna whoops, end up cutting, I guess, as many as I can out of this piece of stock here. All right, so here's what I meant when I said it can't fit through the center bore. You can see how it's, it's kind of close. Obviously, a larger lathe would have a larger hole there, and you could just feed the whole stock through the end of the machine. I was able to get seven cut plus this little chunk. So yeah, let's start turning these down and move them through. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is face this down. All right, and we'll mic it to see where we're at. We'll take a couple around it. We're shooting for 1.25 or about 1.3, 13. We're gonna touch off. Go about 20 thou on this one. And we're at 1.257. So another about six and a half thou. So another six thousandths. Count six thousandths. About two thousandths, eh, let's just take another like two off. All right, right on. All right, at this point, I will be center drilling them all. All right, and now I will drill them all the way through with a quarter inch drill bit. All right, so we're running into basically my first problem with these things. My original, my original plan was to, at this step, turn them down to get a nice machined finish on the outside. And I was gonna run a bolt through the center. You know, just imagine a nut being on the end of it, keeping it all tight, and then squeezing the end of the bolt. That setup was giving me a ton of wobble, so this is one of those cases where I think I might need to make a thing just to hold it. So probably out of this piece right here, Hold a large chunk of it in the three jaw, uh, turn down enough. Now all of this wouldn't be an issue if, you know, a couple steps ago when I mentioned that the through hole isn't big enough for these pieces. Because if it was, I could have just, you know, faced the end while it was still in there, turned down the side and then parted off the exact length and then, you know, I'm kind of ready to go. So yeah, one of the limitations of these little tiny mini lathes. Um, I have been looking at getting something bigger because I do end up, I do use this thing pretty often. Uh, not quite sure what I want to get, but I'll probably be upgrading soon enough because I do have a handful of parts um, that I want to turn to make like little prototypes uh, before I then send off to get machined. All right, so I had a change of plan as I was kind of turning down this little mandrel right here. The quarter inch stick out 
I think would have been much too flexible. So what I'm going to do is basically turn between center. So I have my live center here. As you can see, if I turn it on, there you go. I can now get this whole face in one shot. So at this point, it's pretty much just taking, I mic'd them out. I need to take like five thousandths off the diameter of this whole, of all of them. Um, and then we're off to the, I got my collet block ready to go. We're going to drill slot and do everything on the mill. All right, so this seems to be working, but you can see we're getting a little bit of a interrupted cut. We must be a couple thousandths off center. So we'll dial in a little bit more. All right, guys, so at this point, I'm now ready to set up to cut this slot right here, which is three quarters of an inch deep. I have my collet block ready, but the what I'm trying to figure out right now is I can make a stop on this end block when I load it into the vise. So the block will always be precise, but loading in my little aluminum pieces, you know, Unless I super accurately measure them, put a stop somewhere out of the way. This will obviously be a uh, end mill at that point. Um, or another idea I had <clears throat> to eliminate any of that, I have this old, uh, it's actually kind of a little bit more used for like woodworkers. This used to help me cut my wings to length until I kind of switched up my process and started doing something else. But what I can do is just kind of move it to where I need it. And this just kind of, you know, moves out of the way. So I'm thinking I could do something where make a little like standoff or something, mount it. So that way, once this collet block is loaded up, I could put it in, butt this up to the end of this little tool and then just rotate it down out of the way, do my milling, swap the next one in put it back up into position you know keep going so that way i don't have to sit there and measure each and every one all right guys so here's my setup this thing comes with almost like a little t-bolt anyways um i did mill this flat because i was originally thinking i would have to go upside down and put some spacers in it what i'm going to do is load my clevises into the collet block give myself about seven eighths of an inch so i'll have about an eighth inch clearance to the collet this folds up it just so happens it bottoms out on the vise right there so it'll be in the same spot every time slide this till it touches and tighten it down fold that out of the way and mill my slot you know and then just kind of repeat the process and again so that way i don't have to be so accurate it takes all of any variable of how deep the clevis is into the collet out of it so that way you know my setups and changeovers should be pretty quick you know what scratch the slots just for a second um, we need to do the through holes I think it would be much easier to drill these holes quarter inch holes through while it's solid yeah you are drilling a tiny bit more but to try and drill through the weight of the drill on just these little ears could cause these to deflect or whatever so let's drill our holes all right, so I went ahead and edge found the backside. The diameter is about 742 thousandths. Half of that would be uh, 371 thousandths plus the 100 for the thickness of the edge finder. So we need to go in a total of 471 thou. So we'll go in one, two, three, four, Come around to 71 and we'll call that good right there all right so my slides are locked uh, so I'm now ready to drill because when I started all this my little edge finder right there so as long as all of them butt up to this I'll drill the hole in the same spot on all of them
All right, so we're setting up to cut this slot right here. And I kind of touched on it earlier how I was gonna set that up. So, put you guys down for a second. So we have our pieces that we've taken to this step. Now I wanna make sure I have about seven eighths of stick out because the slot is three quarters of an inch. So that looks good there. And like I mentioned earlier, this little piece that we made for turning them down, turning between centers when we turn these, it just so happens that I'm kind of behind the camera looking, whoops, this right here lines up almost perfectly with the vise. So this bit of the setup is a bit clunky. And just to confirm, we are in point, uh, we're almost dead even. It's actually about almost as even as you can get it. Okay. Now earlier, I already, I re-centered it, even though we should be good from our previous operation. Fold this out. So collet block is locked. Slide this out of the way. Now, the machine's a little bit too noisy, but if I run this in, right around zero, there you go, I feel it touching. All right, so we touched off on the end here and you can see the dial is at zero. Now I can just touch off and reset this every time, but this little fold out thing, you know, puts me right on doing a bunch of repeats, uh, saves a little bit of time. And like I mentioned earlier, the slot is 750 thousandths. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start cutting. We're gonna do a couple real speed. So there we go, slots cut. Surface finished on the inside, looks pretty good. Let's see how centered we are. Now there might be a little bit of a burr. Uh, let's see, so we're at 0.187. And 18, oh wow, 186 across a diameter so half of that we're I don't know not even a thousandth off center so plenty happy with that as you can see off camera I did a few already the one I'm recording I'm halfway through them uh, I got three more to do so I'll quickly knock those out and keep going all right so we got all of our slots cut and all of them now we're gonna work on this little bit of a chamfer right here um, a little bit easier to see on this angle now you can see how it's a perfect 45 degree 100 thou this distance now pretty easy trig could kind of tell you once you touch off on this corner how far you would technically have to go if i expand it it would be so that's your 100 um you know pretty much a squared b squared since this is the right angle you can then figure out this distance here the cad program did that for me it's about 71 thousandths of an inch. So all that to say, I 3D printed this little jig right here. I'll put a little screenshot of it so you can see the 3D model. Just like the model, you can see that, you know, holds the clevis nicely. The top goes on. So you can see how these little notches are in it. And we're gonna use our little alignment pin again. It goes in there like that. And once this gets clamped, you can see how those little notches don't let it rotate at all. 
That way we know we are perfectly square with this edge that we have to chamfer right here. So you can see it in action. I already got it set up because I already did two test pieces. I have this little bit of a clamp holding this piece right here as a stop. This one is just a spacer just to lift it up. I probably should have modeled the vice jaws in it, but that just allows us to clear this back vice jaw here. We put our pin in, I'm trying to do this one handed. And we're slowly gonna put a little bit of, oops, put a little bit of tension on it. And with this stop right here clamped on, I'm kind of just pushing it this way. Give it a tighten. This will tighten up a little bit. So there we are. We're ready to make our pass. I already touched off on this edge right here and moved the mill inboard. So that way we'll get our little chamfer. So the finish doesn't look bad. So we'll spring pass backwards. So there you go. Perfect 45 degree chamfer. That finish looks really good. And with this setup being repeatable with that 3D printed jig, I can just take it out. I just rotated it 180 degrees. And we're ready to make our next cut. All right, so both chamfers done, finish looks good. I'll quickly run through the rest. I'm actually really impressed with how uh, this little 3D printed jig ended up working out. I was able to run through all those very quickly and you can see the finish and the angle, and, you know, they all look great. My mill left a little bit of a burr right on the end, uh, but I gotta kind of break all the edges anyways, which is kind of what this thing's for. All right, so all of our chamfers are done. Now we need to do the threading. We're going to do a 5 16 18 thread through the bottom, which our machine shop one, you can see, is already done. A um, reason I waited till the end is threading on this machine, it doesn't really have the oomph to go. And it's probably one of the more time consuming ones. So I'll start the threads on the lathe and then kind of finish them uh, by hand. So cutting cutting out the slot and everything prevents me from like tapping much deeper than I need to um, so we'll get we'll get one set up on the lathe and finish them out by hand and just so you can kind of see what's going on we have to put them in this way because we can't squeeze down on these little arms right here so we'll put our shim on it A little bit of cutting fluid and I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen. It's probably going to end up stalling out the machine. Yeah, right. You know, that actually went in pretty good. Let's see if we can get all the way through. rats all right so we're getting ready to finish the tap you can see i have it put back in our collet block because i originally tried just holding on to it with these little nylon vice jaws uh, they couldn't hold it strong enough uh, so we're going to swap over to this as far as tapping goes if you're just getting into machining cars whatever one of these gear wrench tap kits is probably some of the best money you'll ever spend comes with like basically anything you'll ever need. 
I got one of those like smaller kits, but which are great. Uh, but looking back at it, I probably should have just like spent the money right off the bat for this one. The ratcheting like tap holders and everything it comes with just makes tapping so much nicer and easier. So I'll put a link to this exact kit in the video description below. All right, I still like to use a little cutting fluid. And since we started these on the lathe, you know, we don't got to worry about any alignment issues or anything. It'll go about, it'll go about halfway in. There you go, I know I'm through. And then coming out, sometimes it's just easier to get rid of that. Spin it a little bit quicker. All right, thread looks good. Got to clean it up and we're getting super close to finishing these. <clears throat> All right, and two side by side. The one on the the one on the left is the one done by a machine shop. The one on the right is mine. So, yeah, they look pretty good. Not bad. All right, guys, so that was kind of fun. Um, a little bit more time consuming than I would like. Uh, let's get these off. Like I mentioned very early in the video, my setup isn't a production setup at all. Um, I kind of just wanted to see if I could make these and how close I could get them to the ones done by an actual machine shop or my, you know, my CAD drawing. Um, but honestly, those little tiny machines, not too bad. These things look pretty good. Like I said, I'll use these for some mock-up stuff. I got a couple other projects going on, so I don't have to dip into my inventory of the ones that are machined from the machine shop. Um, that's where I'm going to wrap this one up. If you liked it, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome to my party. We're just getting started. A life is a dream or a nightmare scarring. Hand me a drink, because I think I'm going on. Me when I'm falling, cover up my scars, flip the handlebars, crash it in my car, wake up in a bar, I'll be a superstar.